We're currently at the headquarters of Choice Carriers, just a couple of kilometers off the N3 near Moy River. And we're going to find out from Peter Choice exactly how this whole decision of this particular domicilium came to fruition. Yeah, uh, Andrew, when I first started in Choice Carriers and I was looking around somewhere, I was renting a, a, a place with my first truck and I looked at many, many places, you know, and I actually f came by this place by accident. An estate agent was driving me somewhere to a place out near Escort and I said, how far is it off the main road? He said, no, it's three kilometres. I said, don't even go any further. He said, well, what about the place here? And it was, you know, 500 metres off a tar road, t uh, not even two minutes off the highway, and it was just um, love at first sight, and it's just we love it and been here nearly 10 years here, or 11 years. I have my grooms live on site, drivers live on site, um, and I have a small little breeding operation here. The trucks are here, besides our Cape Town uh, depot and setting in Cape Town. Pete, it's obviously an incredible feeling to own a fantastic horse, but to have bred that particular horse as well must give you the ultimate thrill and the ultimate joy. I don't say we were lucky that day. You take every win when you go for, per, past the post, but I mean, um, I think probably any other day or day after, uh, Variety Club would, would have uh, trounced, but we take it as it is, and it was a great uh, feat. I think there are only two or three horses that ever beat Variety Club, and he has the honour of being one of them. But it's in a rush here. Variety Club is now putting on big pressure here. Down the far side, act of supremacy. But it's now in a rush. Variety Club, they drop the wire. In a rush, got it from Variety Club. So the obvious question is, how did you get to breed him? It was actually uh, Mike Lowe, a fellow, uh, a very good uh, friend of mine in Cape Town that um, we had the mare t together. It was no really planned thing, it was just a horse that we both liked, a very good type of horse and quite a horse with quite a big range. She, she wasn't, the mother wasn't a very big tall mare, but he was a big imposing horse. Pete, for the uninitiated, you've also had the rare distinction and the opportunity of having trained a grade one winner. Yeah, no, it's an unbelievable feeling. I, I think um, when that happened, when they did in Australia, I think they said there was so many horses uh, in, in Australia, they talk about horses in towns and trainers in town. There are some very successful trainers in Australia that never ever have a horse that races uh, um, in what they call the town, even let alone a group one race. So it was a hell of a feeling, you know, to have that horse. All right, now that we've finished with the racing and the breeding temporary, let's get to the business of choice carriers. How did that come to fruition? Yeah, um, it was actually um, after Mr. Cohen had died, we were um, very fortunate after a little while to be um, off, able to buy that business. And, you know, with it came, but we still inherit a very big part of that. Probably Mr. Cohen's son, Johnny, still works for me and basically runs that, that contract for me. But we're very proud to be associated with that. I think I've said before when you've interviewed me, it's always won by a great horse. And I haven't seen the field yet this year, but I'm not going to, but I know there's a very good horse nominated in it already. Pete, as far as advertising is concerned, do you think it really helps? We, we do advertise, but I don't say a lot of our stuff comes from advertising. It comes from the service that we give. You know, we offer a professional service and we back our service. You know, I mean, if something goes wrong, I've got shoulders big enough to take, you know, a little bit of the responsibility with it um, and try and help where we can. And uh, not just say, well, we, we're, we're not here just to transport your horse for the sake of the money, um, because we're involved in horses very much. That There was a Polo Cross had a, a, a Polo Cross had a World Cup here back in the week after the July here. I transported most of those horses here um, for that. Um, and South Africa won it, uh, uh, the only, the only uh, country that's won it on two continents. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, we, we do such a lot of things. I, I find that the sales are very intense, but we look to be busy most of the year, not just around sale time. Planning for the big occasion, whether it's a sport horse participating in a horse race or cross country, eventing, polo, polo cross, whatever the case may be, how do we get that timing absolutely right? If you do that, I make the commitment and I push horses around it. Joey Ramsden phoned me about to take Act of War 
to uh, Cape Town. He phoned me and he said he wanted this horse here as soon as I can. A hugely loyal and very good client of mine. I said, Joey, when do you want the horse there? I sent a truck two days in a row, one only with a few horses on, but it's paid dividends for me. But here comes Act of War. He is in full cry in the closing stages. An Act of War. The jump is back and back with a bang. Derek Brookman, you know, is a very fair man, and, and I believe Marcus is also um, very fair. And they're great for the industry, and they're great people to work for. The size of the business, or as we refer to it, the cake is only so big in this business of transport. How do you find the competition and what's the understanding between the various competitors? Yeah, I mean we have a, a huge respect for one another. You know, we try and work together where we can, but I mean I don't ever want to be the biggest or the, or, 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 or the only transporter because I think you get complacent like that. And there's a limit to how much you do. You can, be the, you can go on and be the biggest and have the most, but then it's, it comes back to service and quality of service. And, you know, it's very easy for someone to buy a truck. It's very easy for someone to get someone to drive a Code 14 truck. In fact, I have them a dime a dozen drivers come in and um, want jobs. And I'd, I scrutinise and scan and, you know, and don't let them drive their co-drivers for a long while before they drive. Um, and, in fact, on the farm here, most, there's, very, there's not a driver of mine that hasn't driven a tractor and trailer first on my farm here before they get in one of those trucks. The key to it is, is finding horsemen that, that can drive and horsemen that can look after the horses.